The nation of Judah had been led by evil kings for many years. As a result, it was not a strong nation even before King Ahaz. But under his rule, the Lord brought Judah low because of Ahaz. For he had encouraged moral decline in Judah and had been continually unfaithful to the Lord. Ahaz was 20 years old when he succeeded his father Jotham to the throne of Judah. He was a weak and idolatrous king. He even made his son walk through the fire of Moloch, the abominable custom of the Phoenicians. Another son, Ezekiah, who was to become the king after Ahaz, was saved from the flames of the idol by his mother. Soon great troubles and misfortune befell the land and the king. The Edomites revolted and even made a successful invasion of Judah, carrying off many captives. Then the Philistines also broke into some western district of the land which they annexed to their own territory. Finally Rezin, the king of Syria, who had joined forces with King Pekah of Israel, while Jotham was yet alive, marched on Judah together with his associate. Ahaz suffered a crushing defeat at the hands of Pekah. Many people of Judah were killed and numerous prisoners were brought to Samaria. The prophet Obed went to meet the victorious army of Pekah and said, Because God was angry with Judah, he gave her into your hands. You have slain many in cruel rage. The rest you want to force into your service as a man and made servants. Thus you bring guilt upon yourself. Return the captives of your brethren. The God's wrath may not come upon you. Some of the leaders of Israel supported this plea of the prophet, and the captives were freed. They were fed and dressed and were transported back to their families in Judah. Resin too came away with spoils, though Jerusalem had withstood the siege of united armies. Resin captured the important harbor of Elath and exiled its Jewish inhabitants. In their stead he brought in Syrian colonists. Ahaz found himself hard-pressed by the united armies of Pekah and Rezin. The position of Jerusalem seemed very precarious. The prophet Isaiah tried his best to encourage Ahaz and assure him that God would save the city from the hands of the enemies. But Ahaz had no trust in God. He sent to a delegation of noblemen to Tilgah Pleiser, the powerful king of Assyria, with presents of gold and silver taken from the treasure of the temple and his own palace. Ahaz instructed his envoys to hand over the presents to the king of Assyria with the following words, I am your servant and son, save me from the hands of the kings of Syria and Israel who had gone to war against me. Tiglath Pleiser was only too glad to take this opportunity to subdue these two states and gain an outlet to the sea. He marched on Damascus and thus forced Rezin of Syria to abandon the siege of Jerusalem. Rezin himself was captured and killed by the Assyrians. At that time, Syria was incorporated into the Assyrian Empire and at the same time, Tiglath Pleiser also annexed part of the land of Israel. Delivered from his enemies, Ahaz travelled to Damascus to thank his liberator and patron, the victorious Tiglath Pleiser. He was accorded the usual courtesy, but he was made aware of his status of dependence. In Damascus, Ahaz saw a famous heathen altar which he admired so much that he had copied it and sent it to Jerusalem to the high priest Uriah, with a command to put it on the holy temple. After his return from Damascus, he himself sacrificed on this altar and forced the priest to offer the daily sacrifices on it. In order to satisfy the greed of Tilgat Pleiser, Ahaz continually despoiled of its treasures the temple which had been enriched during Uzziah's and Jotham's successful reigns. Ahaz died in the 16th year of his most unfortunate rule. Both politically and spiritually, he had been instrumental in undermining the foundations of the kingdom of Judah. On the day of his death, the sun shone only for two hours so that the burial had to be rushed through. He was not buried with the other kings of the house of David. Hayas did give one good thing to the world and that is his godly son, Ezekiah. Ezekiah is the shining light of revival that we shall examine in the next study. Thanks for watching. If you like to see more content, make sure to like, comment and subscribe.